Hey everyone, welcome back. Shark here with a 1v1 for you today on the updated Pacino Stalemate. Plan is the Axis, we have Prabudi from Poland, rank number 52 with the DAC, using the Armored Support Battle Group, so don't worry, there's no cheese in this one. And then playing against him on the Allied side is Stefan JF from Australia, rank number 32 with the Brits, and he's using the Vanilla Battle Group. So a couple of collaborations here today. Stefan's going to publish his first person view of this match uh, with his own narration within a day or two. The link to the video will be in the description below as well as the link to his channel. So for more on his own point of view throughout this match, check that out. I think it's going to be really fun to watch. And then co-casting this one with me is Orange Pest, fresh off of his vacation to help walk us through the new patch and the changes to the Pacino stalemate map. So this is a shorter match today, but there's a lot of quality discussion both during the match and then afterwards. There's a lot to learn here from one of the masters of the game. Um, that's enough out of me. That onto the match. All right. So here we got Prabuti. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He's on the the top of the screen, north side, as the DAC in red, and Stefan uh, at the bottom of the screen, south side in blue. Uh, and with me, as I said in the intro, I got Orange Pest. So. I know you've only played a handful of games, but this is the new version of Pacino Stalemate. So uh, you can see the fuel points have been moved significantly. What are your thoughts, man? I think it's interesting. I think it's a lot better. There's a big problem was the buildings you can see by the munition point used to be your 10 plus fuel. Mm -hmm. And a big problem that caused is that it's just so easy to attack. Mm -hmm. So if you just lose the initiative at the start of the game, you're kind of just screwed half the time. But now they've, they've shifted away the focus of the battling to the side a little bit more, made uh, the central part more of like a control -y sort of thing, where you want to get space dominance rather than resource dominance, which mm -hmm. I think is very interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and the cutoffs also provide a lot of more aggressive gameplay, and I think it's a lot more interesting overall. I, I much prefer it. Yeah, I think this layout makes a lot more sense. It allows for some like pressure relief valves or you're losing on one side so you go for the cutoff on the other side a little bit more maneuver based gameplay i was one of those guys that would get shoved off this map at the very start every time by you know, an airborne machine gun getting dropped right into the house on top of my fuel point or falls from pioneers and you know they you know i assumed it was a skill issue but i could almost never recover in time so i'm happy to see them changing this up a little bit it, it just wasn't fun i think was a big part of it it's like you're, you can get punished for misplay, but it's like, it's not enjoyable to see the guy sitting on the garrison and you just can't do anything about it, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the, uh, I remember one time as the DAC, the DAC really don't have many good garrison, anti-garrison tools early. Um, you've got the flamethrowers on your Panzer Pioneers, but, um, against machine gun after machine gun and that house, the approach, there's not a lot of cover that you can use, um... Yeah, I, I definitely struggled with that. But now instead you see Prabudi kind of pushing up through the center here. This Pioneers and his 250 taking that munitions. Um, but both of the players kind of being more respectful elsewhere, especially on the fuel side. Uh, one sapper moving out, uh, going to tangle with these Panzer Grenadiers. Um, which the Panzer Grenadiers, minor buff, but the, the main benefit is now the combined arms uh bonus from the crowd shoots in yeah it's opened up a lot more builds because mm -hmm. previously you couldn't really play pgs with bike i mean it was i guess brits was kind of okay like some patches but most of the time it was just kind of bad and now you can actually play 250 you can play bike you can play both you can have a lot more variety although personally in my book i don't know if PGs are still good. I think against Brits it's a lot more viable, but against US they don't feel that good. But it remains to be seen. I've only played like three or so DAC games so far. Yeah, I feel like the DAC don't they don't have like a good early game infantry unit. The the Panzer Grenadiers when they scale and they get veterancy and they get the LMG upgrade, they do fairly well in the late game. But then you also have assault grenadiers. You have your call in infantry, uh, so they're in kind of a weird spot. But, but this is interesting because you see, Prabudi's taking control of the majority of the map using the crowd shoots in. Um, oh, Panzer Grenadiers hit a well placed mine by Stefan on the, the opposite side. That's going to be a one engagement. Uh, one thing I did play a lot actually was Brits, and mm -hmm. one thing I noticed is I think Zephyrs 
like triple sapper opening might be like straight up just super strong. Sappers can fully like even bet it up PGs if you get the right engagement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, something I'm kind of interesting to see develop is just gonna be if sappers just becomes more meta because I know double sapper used to be the last patch so like ideal opener, but yeah. now maybe we'll see triple or quadruple RES as well. Well, especially with the heavy armor battle group, you get access to the uh, reduced reinforcement cost for the sappers. That's pretty tempting, especially when they do as much damage as they do. Now, this squad of sappers kind of caught out uh, by the half track and the Panzer Grenadiers. I think they're probably going to be okay. They might take a lot of damage on retreat. Oh, no, never mind. This half track could. I say this half track could run them down now. Oh, I missed my curse. Maybe he won't. Oh, it's going to be close. That little twitch by the half track there. Oh. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it, yeah. Wow. Also, the fact that he didn't lock in because he's playing uh, armored, he could have had the uh, veteran the better thing. Yeah, the upgraded hull machine guns. Yeah, that would have. Because I think that gives you a flat, like, damage bonus, which might have actually let them kill the, the Royal Engineer. It's so interesting, like, flat damage bonus versus accuracy bonus, right? And, uh, or, like, the Glossatory and the Sauce Trooper have access to armor rather than just target size. Um, it really kind of distorts some of the engagements. I, I yeah, it's what, what Boss does in particular. One thing I'm, like, it's kind of like Shock Troopers and Koto. It's, like, it's hard to quantify how much this actually changes something. Like, what, what does a rifle pen means against the armor? Because you still hit, like... It, it's it's weird, because it basically adds another dice roll to your fight. Mm -hmm. So you, you shoot, you, you do the roll to hit, and then you do the roll to, like, you know, fire properly, penetrate. and then you hit, and then you have to roll to penetrate, and it's like... It's just invisible. You don't really get to understand how it works, really. Yeah, I know if you use, like, Co 3 stats in the DPS comparison, it just basically assumes that uh, a third of your damage just doesn't happen. Uh, when you, like, compare Guasatori to, say, Ranger or something on those lines. And in reality, it might work that way, it might not, because it's all RNG-focused. Yeah, it's just like, you, you could just also hit every single bullet and just instantly kill, like, two models. I mean, yep. that has happened. It's, yep. it's really bizarre, I think. Uh, units like sections are more prone to doing that. Oh, we might see a dead uh, engineer on the right side. Yeah, the sapper's tearing them up. Prodjuston comes in to cover, and I guess, good thing their damage drops off for uh, for Prabhuti. Um, I think he really needs to get some healing out. He's got a lot of really low health models, and those are going to be easy pickups for the British infantry as they scale. Um, interestingly enough, Stefan going for the Stuart. Uh, call in. Meanwhile, Prabhuti playing with double 250 slash nines and the crowd shoots in. That increased yeah. pen. Oh, there we go. Sapper's retreat. It is. It is kind of interesting that he's going for Stewart's. Because I think Stewart's also got hit with the cost increase. Mm -hmm. So now you're kind of. You're still investing a lot more instead of just teching for Stewart's. But considering the commander Prabhuti is playing, there's not going to be an M13. Just gonna have to run packs and uh, fancy leaders, and I'm not sure that'll be enough. Although Stefan is getting a lot of AT rifles, which means his infantry firepower is gonna be way, way lower. Yeah. Although Prabhuti is playing into his hands though with the two uh, two fifties and the flak for Ling now. Uh, so it's That's gonna true. it's gonna be a tier two heavy build here, which I think is probably gonna be the meta for Dak for a little bit with the eight rods nerf. Oh, these Panzer guns. Lucky to knock off yep. the model. Yeah, very lucky. The, it's crazy how much lower the fire rate is on the 250s when they aren't garrisoned. It's it's really weird, but one thing that I think for booty is really just sleeping on here is just like no no veteran gunners. He needs the the extra damage because that will compensate for the lack of extra fire rate. And the fact that pick this commander isn't doing anything with it is kind of like kind of throwing a little bit. Yeah, or at least maybe when he sees the Stewart hits the field here in a minute, he can get the upgraded penetration, and the 250 half tracks will at least be able to chip away at it. I I would have to see like what happens because it feels I feel like the Stewart would just not give a shit, but really you yeah. don't. Who knows? Yeah. 
The other interesting thing here, so the flak has been modified to only suppress when stationary. The boys' AT rifles are a good counter for that because they can still shoot when suppressed at full range. The downside though is I feel like it's still suppressing when units are in green cover. Uh, which was a uh, the other frustration that I had with the flak furling. Just inconsistent compared to the other machine guns and suppression units in the game. Yes, yeah, because it, it does AOE damage, mm -hmm. and because each bullet has a suppression factor, it means that it, it can kind of scatter behind, so to speak. Yeah. But it, it, the flag drilling kind of needs it now, considering it has to be stationary and it gets two shotted by AT guns, and like. It's that. I, I don't know if that is it. Like, a lot of people have been claiming that is super strong. I'm kind of like hesitant to agree because I feel like that will still struggle. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting seeing the patch develop. I mean, last patch, I thought the game was pretty much set in stone, and then like a week or so later, people started doing the NPC assault, and mm -hmm. that changed everything. So I think we'll we'll see in like one or two weeks how like, the meta develops. Yeah, especially if they fix the stuff that's just straight broken. Um, yeah, the L6 is... Uh... And, and the funny thing is, like, you see what they're trying to do, and it's a good idea until humans get it introduced to it, and they find ways to just exploit every piece of it. Yeah, I mean, the L6 is just so... It's so crazy, but, it, like, it's funny. I played against someone doing the L6 cheese, right? It feels <laughs> like... It kills two of my rifles, and I had a grand out, and I just managed to wipe basically his entire army. And because that has this issue late game, where it kind of slowly loses the attrition battles. Yeah. You can, you can afford to take those losses, as long as you just don't outright die, and you can kill the L6s, you kind of just win the game. Yeah. And this is interesting, so Stefan doing a good job of kind of handling this advance here by Prabuti. Um, oh, this flak filling is really at risk of going down here. The steward's definitely going to clean it up. Um, if he gets that, that'll be a big pickup if you can get it. Oh, it whiffs. But I like how he's moved in and uh, hit the cutoff on the opposite side in that infantry section. One two fifty slash nine goes down to the AT gun. Yeah, um, solid ground attack. I think uh, Stefan was a bit too hesitant there. He could have just dove in. I think trading the flak for the steward is a big trade for you. And he's just, he's just kind of ahead, so I think, you know, sometimes when you're ahead in co, just trading one to one is just better, because your economy is just stronger. Yeah, that's a good point, and yeah, I think he's trying to hold on to it here. The Brit infantry continues to be really strong, especially the infantry training, when they get their, their upgraded weapons. They're just very durable, and they do, they scale well into the late game, uh, especially compared to like Grenadiers as the biggest example. Ooh, the, the crowd shooting gets smoked by that Brit infantry. Yeah, this is not looking great for Prabuti. No, and actually the steward is pushed all the way up here. Ooh, takes one pack 38 shot, hits hold fire and backs up. Panzer Jaeger's on the field now. Yeah, I'm not sure what Prabuti's planning. He's sitting on 600 manpower. <laughs> Almost 200 kill. Yeah, I can see he's in a couple of spots here. It's like he wasn't sure what choice to make, so he decided not to make a choice, right, with the initial command points. Oh, the salvage gives manpower too, though. Know. That's pretty good, actually. So he gets refunded on his 259. Hmm. So oh, he's yeah. recovering some of the resources here for his own. Doing anything. Oh, he's taking up the Pier 3 now. Okay. Yep. yep. Might see a D4 play, maybe? A D3? I know, I know some people still like going tons of 3s, so but I'm kind of... I, I feel like they do uh, okay in 1v1s. They start to struggle in team games. Just they're, they're a little too squishy against some of the late game armor that comes out for the allies. And some of the AT. This ISG, despite the nerf doing a lot of work, probably a, a result of the micro here. I feel like he's done a good job moving it around. Wait, the was the ISG nerf? I, I thought it was the Yeah, I think it was primarily an, an auto fire nerf, I think. They wanted people to micro it more. In my experience, I feel like the auto fire is still pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, although it's, it's hard when casting to see yeah. what's auto fire and what's micro. 
Yeah, you'd have to be pulsing constantly with the, uh... The tactical the pause. pause, pause yeah. yeah. And, uh, Tightrope had a good video explaining how the attack round works with it. Or not attack round, attack move. Right. So, yeah, so you can use the attack move with the ISG and it'll actually go find targets for you uh, and auto-fire uh, more aggressively than if you were to just leave it in place because it'll actually oh. auto-adjust and auto-aim, which is a pretty I cool no feature. Idea. That would explain a lot, actually. Yeah. Because some people will aim over it forward in that way where it's like running towards the enemy's base, but then it'll still just be smacking so much. Yeah. So we got one boy section provides a little bit of support. The Pgrins are going to push with it. And now the Stewart on the flank, but Stefan's going to think better of this. He has really good fuel control, right? He's at least kept Prabuti from capping up his medium fuel there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what Prabuti's going to do to break out. I assume it's going to be a Panzer three. He did get the, the self repair, mm -hmm. but he's kind of just not doing much. He's, he's, a, he's a little light on AT, on like hard AT. He's not really prepared to deal with like a Matilda, which Stefan's got his tier 4 coming out. But the other thing is, if he's floating this manpower, a second ISG might not be terrible, because the Brit infantry are almost always going to be staying in cover, which means that indirect is really valuable at forcing them out, where your your infantry and your half-track can do more damage. Yeah, um, I agree completely. Especially considering the way he's playing this, he's kind of passive, he kind of just needs to throw some value. Mm -hmm. If you're playing DAC and you're dead even in KD, uh, that generally just means you're losing. <laughs> uh, that's, that's like a, a general rule, because you're you're playing with vehicles, right? Yeah. Those vehicles are meant to pay HP for manpower. Yep. And if you're not doing that, that's, that's not a good sign. Yeah, and Stefan again hitting the cutoff here. So this is, I think, a good example of like a great way to play this map, is constantly applying this pressure. Sappers are going to do a lot of damage to these Panzer Pioneers if Prabhuti doesn't see it. Oh, we got one of the sections in the middle almost going down to the ice. It's putting in some serious work. Yeah, they're going to just barely get away here. I, Man, I feel like, I feel like Prabhuti, uh, he's got a P3 out. Panzer Pioneers get away with just a sliver of health. Yeah, I feel like he needs either, like, you know, one more Panzer Grenadier squad or one more ISG to help deal with these team weapons. All right, here comes the Stewart. Oh, the P3 oh. hits a mine. Nice, cheeky mine placement. That 250 may go down. Yeah. Oh, the flak pulling gets snared. He does have the P3 nearby, but this is going to be some... <laughs> The serious best for a person to have to make out to recover the situation. All yeah. it takes is one of those 18 seconds to push up and he's done for. Yeah, he's just gonna knock out the six pounder. The micro on those vehicles is pretty good to keep them all alive. Uh, six pounder gets cleared but not destroyed. The pack 38 is moved up, as is the P3. The Stewart. Oh! Smoked. That uh, was a misplay from Stefan. He might actually be able to hold the AP gun out of here, actually. This is gonna swing things back into Burbuti's favor, I think. All he has to do now is just get... Just some... He has to get healing, or at least something to give him back some map control, because right now he's losing the infantry war pretty heavily. Yeah, well, you, he's listening to you, because he's getting his med truck out now. His vehicles are self-repairing, and Panzer Pioneer is coming out. Um, he is hurting on fuel control, but I think, uh, yeah, VPs are becoming the more pressing issue now. Yeah, luckily he can salvage the steward if he gets the chance. It's gonna give him at least some manpower back. Oh, this is a well-placed Vickers. Oh, nope, there goes the steward. <laughs> the league is just gonna shut him out, but I, I mean, this is still, uh, because Stefan is going Crusader, that's gonna give Prabuti a way better fighting chance. Yeah, it's it's Point faster, forward. but it, and it should do better against the vehicles than the Stewart, but or the Matilda with the upgraded gun. Oh, six pounder. Then actually, cleared. generally speaking, uh, you don't want to upgrade your Crusaders at all. That's from the more. That's from the other patch, correct? Oh, look at him trying to oh tow this goodness. six pounder away. Oh. Look at this, P3. 
Oh, he needs to drop the spot. Crusader. Oh my gosh, he's got a sliver of health. One more shot. B3 knocked out. So good pickup for Stefan. And he's still winning the VP fight. So as bad as that engagement looked, he's actually in a better spot than you might think. Oh, well, yeah, he was. It's going to be all or nothing for the booty, I think. He has to just <laughs> kill these AT guns and kill the Crusaders. <laughs> yeah, I love these shots through the hedgerow. Ooh, Ooh. The double AT gun, though. And then the snare. Oh, that's a good grenade, though. Oh, it just doesn't do as much damage as you'd want. The Pegrens, though. Oh, there goes the Crusader. He has to rush for the VPs uh, now. He actually has a chance. If he just calls them the Assault Grens and just goes for it. Yeah. Yeah, he's, but you're right. He's got to get on it. The triple cap is just beating him up right now. And so it's funny. He's on army composition right now. He's doing great. Um... Like, yeah, if he, if he doesn't pick up some of these VPs, uh, this is going to be game over anyway. I wonder if he's got a tunnel with him. Oh, dude, he's got... I think he's got a... He has to realize the VPs. He has no idea. Just, is it because he, uh, he picked up the center, but... He's still messing around with AT guns, you know? Yeah, I don't... Oh, he's got one... Okay, he's really just... He, he's got the reading. Panzer Pio going, but this Vickers is actually a good counter. He has to get to that green cover truck right now. No, suppress. Now, the Vickers... It suppresses a little slower. It'll do more damage than anything else. Here comes infantry section. He just section. needs the decap, I think. If he gets the decap... Oh! Last second. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I think that's game actually. Yeah, it almost certainly is. Oh, that's uh, a shame. If this game went another five minutes. Yeah. Oh, Rudy just losing to himself. Oh, Flak filling goes down. Yeah. <laughs> Now he's just going for a moral victory. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's depressing. Oh, everything getting knocked out. That's the decap, and now we have nothing left. We have to fall in. <laughs> With one VP. But this infantry section's about to hop on the center here. Uh, so this is this is going to be it for sure. Yeah, there's, there's no way you can. Yeah, the miracle here. Yeah, the med truck. It's so funny. He's still picking up AT guns. I there, there was something went wrong here, but I just like maybe I he's telling it. Maybe he's playing with music. Maybe <laughs> he's just not it, hearing it. It was, really, it was really weird. It felt like to me this this was his first time playing the map. That's what the capping order kind of told me. Mm -hmm. Because he was not there yet. Did you? Um, he was going for that munitions point, and I was like, what's going on? Yeah. Alright, so starting with an analysis of Prabhuti's DAC build, the armor support battle group. He starts with his Panzer Pioneer, gets a Krod Schützen out, gets a Panzer Grenadier, and then a 250 half track. So a nice balanced early game build, pretty mechanized, but still a fair amount of capping power with the Krod Schützen. Then he locks in the armored support battle group, he gets a second Panzer Grenadier squad, and then he goes into the tier 2, the light support company. Um, upgrades his combat half tracks, uh, gets fire support elements out. And th so the combat half tracks might seem unusual at first, right? Because he only has the one 250 half track, but he calls in two of the mechanized groups later. Uh, so he ends up getting three of the 250s. I think it's a smart choice. Um, from there, he calls in the LEIG via the mechanized group. He does two of the 250 slash nine conversions on the half track. Then he gets a flak for Ling. And at this point in the game, he's really got a nice like mechanized force moving around. Not super heavy on infantry, but really effective um, at dealing damage and not losing a lot of manpower. You can see in the green here on the build, there's a lot of tech choices, which is an indicator uh, that you're doing pretty well as the DAC from a manpower bleed perspective. He gets a pack 38. He gets another uh, mechanized group, this time with the Panzerjägers in it. Um, then he goes for his tier four, the Panzer Army Command, uh, tech's emergency repair kits, uh, the vehicle survival package and rapid advance. He gets one Panzer III out and he gets a med truck towards the end of the game. 
uh, before uh, he loses on VPs there. Looking at his battle group choices, um, so he goes for the uh, superior fire drills, thank you. 100% um, increase to damage from whole machine guns. He doesn't finish teching the right side of the tree. Instead, he unlocks the, the salvage, which is actually huge for Dak in this new patch, getting the manpower back. Um, he goes for the rapid, uh, rapid advance, uh, and then also doesn't unlock either one of his air abilities. So even though he had armored support and Orange Pest brought this up a couple of times in the cast, he doesn't use the battle group uh, to its greatest extent here. And then for Stefan, playing as the Brits, uh, he's going to go pure vanilla here, so no battle group selected at all, despite having 14 command points. Uh, he gets a, starts with his sappers, gets his uh, section command post tier 1, goes straight into four infantry sections, and then an early field infirmary, which makes a lot of sense with all that infantry on the field. Gets a vickers out, uh, which he uses fairly well, uh, despite the fact that there aren't too many uh, DAC infantry on the field. Then he goes for his tier 2, he unlocks the stewards, Gets a steward out, so that is a lot. That's 70 fuel for a single steward. Um, it's one of those things with the new patch and the new costs, I would imagine uh, if you're going to unlock stewards, you probably want to get more than one. Uh, he gets a six pounder out, then he goes for the infantry training. Again, makes a lot of sense with the amount of infantry he has on the field. Gets a second six pounder, tacks up to tier four, uh, gets a crusader, uh, it gets knocked out, he gets another crusader before the end of the game is able to close it out on vps okay so i'm back here with uh with orange pest and right here at the end of the cast uh as we we're talking you said that it looked like based on his capping order that he hadn't played this new version of the map before so uh for those of us that haven't played a lot of the new pacino stalemate can you talk us through that a little bit so um i'm kind of scrolling through the replay quickly again but mm -hmm. uh, one thing i'm noticing right away is going for the central munitions mm -hmm. uh, it's bad just straight up. And it's bad for two reasons. One, it's a plus 16, which means it's a long time to cap. Mm -hmm. Two, it just gives you munitions, which in the early stage, unless you're planning on early mines or early flamer, basically means you aren't really getting any value out of those uh, that, those, those resources, effectively. Mm -hmm. um, he went for the north side fuel immediately and left up Pegrin unsupported. Mm -hmm. One thing you can notice when you look at the map itself, right, is the fuels are at the edges. And you have to kind of always be protecting your cutoff mm -hmm. and harassing your opponent's cutoff on the north side, or you have to be pushing really hard on his field on the south side. Yeah. Uh, Prabudi was doing neither. He was sending uh, isolated pockets through the center, and that wasn't working out well. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of just let Stefan dictate the pace of the game a lot. So he immediately just got thrown off. And his units, just like the first engagement with the peak run on the north side, for example, it's it's a two v one sappers against uh, PGs, right? And you just and then the rifle takes shot a lot of flank. HP damage and just gets forced back, and it's just brutal. Yeah. So the the ironic thing though is he ends up kind of figuring it out um, to the point where in the middle of the cast we're talking about man, he's floating a lot of manpower. I feel like he needs something else on the field. Uh, from an, like an engagement and composition point of view, when he shifted down to the west side there, that other VP, uh, he was doing a good job of, of controlling the engagements, moving together his flak for laying his 250s with infantry and support. Uh, and like we were talking about kind of off camera there, like he, if you're just worried about, like if you were going for an annihilation victory, he's in position to eventually win that game, right? Um, knocked out the Stewart, knocked out two AT guns. He actually stole, was kept messing around stealing the six pounders, um, and then knocked out that Crusader there. He lost his P3, but those are all good, good trades in the long run for the DAC player. Um, so you know, from like a you know, what do you do differently? At least in the way that he like built and fought his force, it made a lot of sense. I think he just prioritized the wrong half of the map. Um, yeah, you know, he, he definitely had an opportunity to win that <laughs> game. It was when he did that push and he cut off both AT guns. Mm -hmm. Not only was he floating a lot of manpower and resources, but he could have easily stabilized his victory count. Just deploying like an assault gun or a PA gear on the side immediately, just the rapid like capping. Yeah. And then just trying to get, like, because he had two AT guns against one Crusader. Sure, he didn't have a P3 anymore, so he's kind of a little bit exposed, but he still had a PA gear. Yeah. And he still had, I think, at that point, he got a pretty substantial infantry advantage because most of uh, the sections were either AT rifles, which means they get their teeth kicked in by PGs, mm -hmm. or they were dead. Yeah, and the sappers so were gone, like, too. 
Yeah. Yes, like there was so much that was just gone, dead, and just he had no way of protecting the AT guns because the Crusader was dead. And mm-hmm. Stefan was kind of on the back foot, but he just didn't exploit it enough. Yeah. It it's kind of interesting, like the the levels of strategy within the game. So like at the tactical level, he was winning, but then at the the strategic level, you know, like the actual game objective. And this is something that a trap that I fall into all the time is I, I focus so much on winning the fight that I don't actually focus on the VPs or the right resources. Um, I feel like Stefan, on the other hand, played the map fairly well, right? Uh, constantly pushing on that fuel point and that cutoff um, and and spreading out in a way that he had a, re- a pretty significant resource advantage, especially on the, the fuel and the munition side for the vast majority of the game there. Minus... The, the you know initial five minutes Prabhuti had great map control but then it, it fell apart especially once the crowd shoots and got knocked out um, the other thing I thought Stefan did really well was some of the mine placement uh, you know it was a shame he had those four vehicles all clumped up and engine critted at one point and wasn't able to finish them off but a lot of that mm-hmm. well, one of the things I want to highlight was that early mm-hmm. super early mine on mm-hmm. the munitions mm-hmm. that basically swung a really uh, like he basically just got to control the north side, and it forced the Barbudi to overcome a lot of stuff to just forcing the the sapper back. Yeah, and he got kind of lucky too that the uh, the sapper lived. But it was just that early mine. I mean, if they had caught on a bike, for example, mm-hmm. that that stings a lot, especially in the early game. Yeah, and and a, a lot of people ask like, well, how do you think about mines? Where do you place them? And uh, I don't know if you have any like rules of thumb. Um, you know, I typically think of it like you, you want to have a couple of mines. Now it's not as much as big of a risk that the eight rods got nerfed, but as like Americans, I'd always try to put down a couple of mines, uh, kind of like on the retreat pass to my own headquarters so that if I am getting chased by like light vehicles, they hit that and it stops them. And then occasionally if you have an engineer far forward capping, like what's the most likely route a vehicle or a unit's going to come take in to cap this point. And I'll just throw a mine down here real quick and, and move out. Um, I don't you, know. Go for it. I, I would say you want to aim at the points where, like, you know, stuff will always go through. So the classic is victory points, mm-hmm. uh, manpower points, munition points. You always know something is going to want to decap or keep your stuff. Mm-hmm. And so you can always guarantee that you'll, like, my minds, for the most part, you usually always go off. And mm-hmm. the, the reason is I just place them in st- play areas where there's a lot of activity, and I do it when there's a short window of time to do it. Yeah. Factions like US, which get late sweepers too, you can kind of you kind of know like if you got an MG42, for example, he's gonna want to try and flank and push you in from the sides. And that does mean you can prepare for that by just having insurance mines on the sides because you know he's gonna try and do something. Yeah. But yeah. it's it's a bit of a thing. We also have to like know your opponent, right? Like does this guy love to blob like six vehicles and just right click your base? then you probably want to have some mines in your base, right? Or if you, if you know he's going to play aggressively or defensively, then you might want to play mines to just hit infantry instead. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's, it's, it's weird. It's, it's a bit of, like, a poker thing, almost, where you're, like... It's, it's very luck. It, it is it's basically just luck, right? Uh, effectively. But, like, you can kind of control the factors to it a little bit. Yeah. And, and I feel like when you're at, like, the tournament player level, and you're like, I've played this guy... 15 times i know that he has these tendencies just like grenades right different players react to grenades different ways you know um newer players might just hit the retreat button so you can start to kind of adjust the the spot of your grenade because you know they're going to run away um but then like as you play against people they do different things and sometimes you can determine those tendencies in the game that you're in if you have engagements over and over again but uh yeah i i would say like i rarely regret laying mines they're the occasional like random event where you happen to be passing over your own mine and then like a mortar round hits and you you know crit your own vehicle which is i I think the most absolutely painful thing is Uh when when you know your opponent or when you yourself happen this happens there's like you place down like three or four mines in an area Mm -hmm. and then like two minutes later a sweep comes through and sweeps it all it's just so so painful feels bad yeah, and it's one of those things too with mines. Is if 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 you're playing against someone and you're keeping track of where his like engineer units are, mm-hmm. that lets you actually have like okay, he's been through this area. I know 
there, there hasn't been any upgrades, for example, or he hasn't done anything that indicates uh, that he has low munitions. Mm -hmm. there, there might be a mine here, and so I'm just going to get a sweeper up here just in case. Because some people, they'd like to do it uh, after they hit a mine. They're like, okay, I've hit a mine, now I get a sweeper. <laughs> uh, some people do it preemptively. I do it preemptively, because if, yeah. uh, if you're playing US, for example, and you hit a, and you hit a mine with the Greyhound, and you're like, uh, there's, I don't know, in last patch it was like, you know, one or two Greyhounds just dives you and you're dead. Mm -hmm. Or an M13. And that just puts you on the back foot in a way that just can kill you. It's mm -hmm. not right. Yeah. So just having a sweeper just guarding your, your light vehicle is a generally good thing you can always do. Yeah. But the other way, like, uh, you see like a, you know, if you're playing Wehrmacht and you see a cut and crowd, that usually means they only have one Pioneer squad. And so if you see a flamethrower on that pioneer squad, you're like, oh, okay, game on. Obviously, they can still lay mines, but now you're, you should be a little bit more liberal with them because, um, you know, he doesn't have a sweeper out. And yeah, it if you get one hit and then the guy spends 45 munitions on a mine sweeper, you know, at least you're getting your munitions back uh, for that mine strike. So uh, I think it's probably pretty worth it. Yeah, I mean, one, one thing um, that Relic did to make people make sweepers more often too, it's just they made it so it increases your repair rate. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're never, like, even if you, your opponent never builds a mine, which some people, there are people on auto match that will do that, mm -hmm. they just don't care, uh, you're still getting some value in getting a sweeper. Yeah. Like, there's always a game to, like, sweepers are never bad, essentially, I would say. I've never had a situation where I'm like, I regret getting a sweeper. Well, especially now that you can put them away, right? You, I don't think yeah, you can do that in Co. Yeah. Two. It's a, it's a little bit of micro, and occasionally you'll see the guy that like has his minesweeper put away and then hits a mine with his engineer yeah, unit. Like, oh, it's <laughs> it feels bad, man. But uh, no, I mean, there's no reason not to. The only reason would be I need the garrison clearing tool, right? Like, I need, um, I need the flammenwerfer. Uh, that would be the only reason to not have one. I think. Well, that and the Falsher and Pyos with their grenade launchers, but that's that's kind of more of a meme strat at this point. Um, yeah, anything else that you uh, saw from this game? I thought it was a pretty good summary of like the new Pacino stalemate. But yeah, I think Stefan was way more used to playing that map than Prabuti was. Yeah, uh, it shows. But I was like, it, it was very off meta. I think both those builds. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're still in the flux state where it's like, what what is going to be the meta? What's going to be the most optimal stuff? It's kind of hard to tell right now. But I think like. I don't know, like, from what I've spoken with Asha and some other people, mm -hmm. uh, there's like, they, they have two camps, like, either they like, think PGs are game-breaking, because day one, the people were losing to DAC again, mm -hmm. uh, and then you have people like me who are like, I don't know if PGs are even worth building still. I feel like bursts are probably still better. Yeah, uh, and I don't think we will really know, there's obviously a hotfix in a couple of days to address some of the, the more broken stuff. Yeah, apparently, apparently they're nerfing Panzer already, which seems kind of insane to me, but maybe it's like a team game thing. Yeah, I, at the team game level, DAC blobs can be really bad. Um, I, you know, I think, man, it, it, sorry, I'm struggling with words here. It, it's a That's little fun. tricky with the DAC. I, I think it's like risk reward, right? You give them good infantry, but they every time you bleed them, they really suffer, right? So DAC are almost forced into playing with a vehicle heavy build um, because if they overinvest in infantry and they lose a couple of engagements, then now they're behind. Um, every time I see a DAC player struggle with tech, it's never a fuel problem. It's always manpower. Um, yeah, it's also the fact that um, this is a bit of a general design thing, but Axis don't have the same kind of light vehicles that allies do generally. Mm -hmm. you, you look at like the, the idea of a generalist light vehicle, and that just flat out doesn't exist for Vermont. Mm -hmm. You have the eight rad. That's mm -hmm. more like it just happens to have slightly the capability of dealing with like Jaffies and eight rad and Greyhounds if you have enough of them. Yeah. And and that's doctrinal too. Uh, yeah. And the same thing goes with the M13, right? That's doctrinal. Mm -hmm. So when, you, when the eight rad gets nerfed for DAC, a big problem you find with the faction is just like, I have all these map powers things. My opponent's got a light vehicle and maybe better infantry, and I just don't know what to do. Yeah, uh, I, I can I could build a P gram, but if the P gram has to vet up and fight against vetted units in the mid game, that's bad. Yeah, 
you could invest into stuff like martyrs, but martyrs are just naturally countered by AT guns. Mm -hmm. And your support weapons don't feel as good. But I think in team games, uh, I think a lot of it just comes down to uh, the fact that combined arms exists in the way that it does, where it's blobbing together around a vehicle is just better. Yeah. And, and you, like, I at least respect Relic for trying to balance across, like, four different game modes and four different factions with all the battle groups. Like, it's not an easy problem to solve, uh, but it is really funny to see how the game changes. Stuff that's viable in 1v1 doesn't work in team games and vice versa. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the only one, the one thing I think that's, like, utterly insane in, in every game mode is the, the NPC horde right now. That one oh, yeah. is yeah. so brutal. It are, well, and the cooldown is so short. It just arrives over and over and over again. Um, yeah, that's a separate discussion, but I agree with you. It's a, it's a whole other. <laughs> I, I, say, I did send you a replay which showcases how strong it is in 1v1. So okay. You, I, I, I'm telling you that game is like showcases the entire matchup. Oh, you got it. Well, we'll just... I'll roll right from this into that and uh, and keep them coming. Hey, man, thanks for sitting down. Uh, glad to have you back from your, your vacation. And uh, yeah, we'll have to do this it's, again. It's been, a, it's been a roller coaster of a week. Yeah, I bet. All right, dude. Well, appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you all in the next one.